Hey guys, what's going on? It's Dan here. Time for another playing card deck review. We have the Hearts Linen Eagle deck. A nice reproduction deck reproduced by Michael Scott of Home Run Games. I believe there was a couple different iterations of this particular deck, I want to say. I'm not 100% sure. This is the one that I got, so we're going to go with it. I think there was a couple different tuck boxes for this one. You can see I absolutely mutilated the, uh, the, the tax stamp style seal for this deck. But we're going to go with it. So, Michael Scott of Home Run Games. Also, there was another deck I reviewed on this channel, the Victor Mauger deck. And that was also done by Michael Scott of Home Run Games. Let's take a look at this one. Pretty simple back design. And I want to get into the story of this reproduction deck. Take a look. Salady's Patent, February 7th, 1864, New York, 546 Broadway. Down at the bottom, Samuel Hart & Company, 416 South 13th Street, Philadelphia. So this deck was originally copyrighted by Cyrus W. Salady. He was the first person to ever put corner indices on playing cards. February 9th, 1864. Salady was issued United States patent number 41587 to print numbers, suit symbols, letters, and even a miniature picture of a playing card, a card within a card, if you will, in the corners of the playing cards. This Salady's patent was purchased by Samuel Hart, and he put Salady's name on the deck and on the ace of spades. So that is the story, and we're looking at a reproduction. That is a... Um, a restoration, if you will, or a re-rendering of how this original deck looked. Uh, interesting here, these corner indices. We've got very small corner indices compared to how they look now. And they have a pip not just below the letter or the number, but off to the side of it as well in opposite corners. And these pips here, the center pips on the spot cards, you see our spades, they're a little fatter, a little crude compared to how the artwork of today's playing cards is. And if you want to speak of crude, this is especially true when we get to the court cards. Look at that quote-unquote grotesque style artwork, as I like to call it. What are jack of spades there? I mean, they... The eyes, the nose, the mouth. I mean, it almost looks like like the face of a gargoyle like you would see on an old Gothic building or a church. I mean, just the artwork was crude. There's no else to say it. People didn't design decks to collect and for art purposes like they do today. You know, people made playing cards to play games and to gamble. That's why people that's why you had a deck of playing cards back in the day. And also notice you don't have that symmetrical back design where you have a torso and a head and then a torso and a head so that it looks the same in both directions. No, this is a one-way court card. It's how they look back then. You don't see legs on a jack of spades too often. It's your queen, there's your king. And it's, it's more or less the same principle throughout the deck. So I'm just going to try to flip through these kind of fast so we can see the rest of the courts. There's our Jack of Hearts. There's our Queen of Hearts. That one is actually, that's not a bad face. That's not very grotesque. There's our Suicide King, if you will, King of Hearts. We're going to go through the clubs. There's our Jack of Clubs, which isn't too terrible. Queen of Clubs, King of Clubs. And we're going to make our way through the diamonds. And there's just a, a 
couple little surprises right at the end of this. There's, let's see, what do we got? Jack of Diamonds, Queen of Diamonds, King of Diamonds. That's an interesting face, if there ever was one. And we've got a, a, a patent card. It looks almost like the Ace of Spades. Just a little shield there with some text talking about the restoration and reproduction. Did this come in the original deck? I do not know. Bazik Register? I've never played this game, never even heard of this game. I probably should have done some research and looked up Bazik, but I didn't have time. I apologize. There's some homework for you guys. Look up Bazik. Looks like there's a little score counter. These little, uh, these little dials or windows or counters or whatever you want to call them. Looks like this card was used to keep track of your score in this game called Bazik. And you see the background. I don't again, I don't know if this was like this in the original deck, but the background is different than the rest of the cards, so that your scorecard doesn't get mixed up. We've got a blank, which I guess you could use for a lost card or a second joker or for card tricks or whatever. And then the Imperial Bower. Any fans of Euchre might know what this card means. And Euchre, and every hand of Euchre, two of the jacks are known as the left and the right Bower. The trump cards, the highest and the second highest card in any given hand. And at some point in history, the first Joker was ever made. And it wasn't called Joker, it was called the Imperial Bower. It was higher than the highest trump card. This was created to just throw a little spice into the game of Euchre. So you see here, this card takes either Bower. That's why it's called the Imperial Bower. Samuel Hart and Company, Imperial Bower or highest trump card. And that, in a nutshell, is the 1864 Salades Reproduction Deck. This is a really good one. Michael Scott, again, of Home Run Games, does a really, really nice job on these reproduction decks. There's another good one for you. Hearts, Lynn, and Eagle. That's been Dan with another deck review.